I have the great pleasure now of being joined by Dr. Samuel DeGogo Jack, ADA President of Medicine and Science. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yours is such an important role. Talk to me about your priorities. Wow, this is our 75th anniversary as an association. So the ADA was founded in 1940. In the midst of World War II, we had courageous doctors who decided to declare a different kind of war, a war on diabetes. Now in 1940, when we were formed, there were about 750,000 Americans who had been diagnosed with diabetes. And physicians felt it necessary to declare war on diabetes. Today, there are nearly 30 million Americans with diabetes and more than 300 million around the world. So that war on diabetes, declared 75 years ago, must be joined with renewed vigor. So as president of medicine and science of the ADA, my goal is to really change the conversation around diabetes. Those of us in the field of diabetes, either as researchers or caregivers, do not need anyone to convince us as to the seriousness of diabetes. But going around the country, and indeed around the world, I do not sense that the public takes diabetes with the seriousness it deserves. And that's a major challenge. So how do you tackle that beginning here in the U.S. and really from that global perspective? Indeed, it is a challenge. And it is a challenge that requires a balanced approach. The challenge is how do we as physicians and scientists communicate the seriousness of diabetes to the lay public in a manner that is at once true, informative, but not totally intimidating. Every year, the American Diabetes Association sends volunteers to the halls of Congress. When we go there, ADA volunteers knock on the doors of our elected officials. And we go there to remind them about the seriousness of diabetes and to lobby for increased federal funding for diabetes research. Because the mission of the American diabetes is to prevent and cure diabetes and to improve the lives of all people affected by diabetes. And there is a major role that public funding for diabetes research can do toward achievement of the cure. So when we engage our elected officials in Congress, we tell them frequently that each year, diabetes accounts for more deaths than HIV, AIDS, and breast cancer combined. Now, this is not a statistic that we gleefully divulge. It is not a number that we take comfort from. But nonetheless, it is a statistic that is true and a number when communicated that serves as a lever to turn the sclerotic wheels of inertia, inaction, and complacency that often plagues the discourse around diabetes. There is no such thing as a, a touch of diabetes. So we want the public to accept the seriousness of diabetes and behave in a way consistent with that appreciation. In addition to those very sad statistics, I know there are things that you all are excited about in terms of treatments and, and therapies out there. Can you discuss those briefly? Amazing progress has been made. Every year it takes us closer to the cure. A child born in 1920 with diabetes did not expect to live a year. People who had diabetes before 1922, especially type 1 diabetes, at that time called insulin-dependent diabetes, they had no treatment because insulin had not been discovered. But beginning 1922 with the discovery of insulin and increased understanding of the mechanisms of diabetes, we have people living longer than projected by their doctors when they were first diagnosed with diabetes. In the past 10 years, we've had more diabetes therapies introduced into the space, the treatment space, than in the preceding 50 years. We have needles that are more user-friendly for drawing blood, for checking blood sugars. 
we have technologies that have effectively transferred critical aspects of diabetes self-management from the hospital and clinics to the patient's home. It's a new frontier if we forge ahead, and I think sessions like this only help to bring that home. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. You're most welcome.